Hi, in this video, I'll explain the working of Pascal's law. It says that when a pressure is changed in a liquid, it will be transmitted uniformly throughout the liquid without getting diminished. Quite difficult to understand all that it means and let's go through this uh, video now. So I've taken a cylinder and put liquid in that. You can see a blue colored liquid and the liquid is um, inside that transparent cylinder. So put a piston on top of the liquid, the orange colored one, so that keeps some pressure on the liquid. And above that piston you can see a rod coming out and a platform on which we will load the weights. The weights are on the right hand side and kept on a table. Inside the liquid, the important thing is to name three points. We can call it particle 1, particle 2, and particle 3 is at a deeper point, a greater depth. Now let's look at an animation. We are loading the weights on the piston platform and as we put weights on the top, these weights will have an additional force. They will press down on that piston. You can note here that the piston didn't move at all in the animation, although we loaded a lot of weights. Uh, that's because the liquid is assumed to be incompressible in Pascal's law. So since it cannot be compressed, the piston will of course uh, increase the pressure inside the liquid but the liquid column is not going to get any smaller. So the difference in height between the point 3 and the point 2 has not changed. So the points are relatively at the same distribution. Now let's see how the pressure got distributed. Initially on top of the piston loading platform there is only atmospheric pressure. So P1 equal to P2 is anyway there as per the principle of hydrostatics. Two points at the same level will have the same pressure. The point 3 has got a liquid column above it. So relative to P1 and P2, the pressure at, at point 3 will be P2 plus rho Hg where H is the height of the liquid column. Now after we put the loading, the differences did not change. That's what I want to emphasize here. So P3 is still P2 plus rho Hg because the liquid column doesn't go away uh, and that still remains the liquid column between 3 and 1. And that liquid column bears down with its weight on 3. Similarly, P1 is still equal to P2. So the differences between the various points 1, 2 and 3 are still the same as they were before. So what has happened in Pascal's law is that as the pressure is increased, it has distributed it uniformly. And the value of the pressures have all become new values, but the differences remain the same. Let's take a more uh, complicated arrangement with two pistons now. So you have a U-tube, like a manometer, fill in liquid. The liquid will occupy the same level on both the arms. Put in two pistons, one on the left, one on the right and uh, initially let it be just atmospheric pressure acting on them. So the liquid is acted upon by atmospheric pressure plus some weight of the piston arrangement. So our interest is at two points one and two. Uh, so let the pressure be P1 on the left uh, arm of the U-tube at the top of the liquid and let the pressure at a point two be P2. And we assume that points one and two are the same height above our reference plane. Now we press down on the piston, the left side piston 1. Because the liquid is not compressible, it will push up the piston on the right hand side and the liquid column height will be retained. So you will get a new set of points 1 which is the top of the liquid